Alrighty. Got a quick lesson here for everyone. Well, I'm hoping it'll be a quick one. Um, so I've pre-prepared a few things sooner. Now, I do apologise for how long it's taken for me to actually get some content going. Uh, been pretty busy with a lot of things and finally got myself some time. A lot has happened over the last, what, year and a half. Uh, namely, not sure if people are aware, uh, OpenCheatTables.org, the original website. Uh, the owner is MIA. We still haven't heard a thing. Uh, the website went down. I've taken ownership of OpenCheatTables.com. So if you do want to get on that site, it's OpenCheatTables.com. Just be aware there is an OpenCheatTables.org currently run by someone. Nobody knows who. They're just trying to imitate. They did run a other website initially, stealing stuff from OCT. <coughs> And now they've grabbed the original domain. No big deal. Anyone can spot a fake a mile away. Uh, but yeah. So, back to the lesson. Here's today's goal. Going to dynamically change our experience amount closer to our next level experience, but only when we reach around a third of the experience needed. Now, why would you do something like this? For me personally, I get quite bored grinding massive amounts of XP and sometimes games can go a little bit overboard with how much XP they expect you to grind. I also get very bored <clears throat> when I just max level. Like, what, what, to me, I don't see the fun in playing the game if I just have the best of everything right from the beginning. So, the idea of this script is say you need 900 experience to level up, you'll go out, you'll earn 300 of that experience, and then it will put your experience value closer to that 900. So how we'll do that, we will create a function that reads the player and pawn experience to level, perform basic arithmetic on the stored value and set our experience, create a loop to only change our experience when we reach this value, and then set our experience to be experience to level minus 10. Now, you could set this to whatever value you want, whatever feels less cheap to you. Now, here's something I pre-prepared. So this script, now, I hope anyone viewing on mobile can actually read this. If you have trouble reading it, because I have heard feedback about dark mode being too hard to read, I will adjust things, you know, so it will still be dark mode, but you'll be able to read it better. Like, I'm really sorry, but I can't be burning my eyeballs out to do a tutorial. I'll just make it as readable for you as possible. But yeah, so we start off regular scan. I searched for uh, searched for this this value here every time it went up, and then searched for what access is this value, right? And that's where and then these are all offsets that I found off their 
these are the ones that I managed to pinpoint what was what. Um, I believe some of these are health and stamina. So we can reuse this script for health and stamina cheats later on. But, you know, it's a what access script. So we just have to actually access it to populate. All right, you can see our XP to level and our current XP matches what we've got here. Right, now for the script part of it, uh, I'm just going to pull this up and put it on my other screen so I don't lose track of the steps. And right, Control Alt A to bring up an auto assembler. We're going to be doing this in Lua. Remember to put your syntax check in just so it doesn't run when we hit OK or add to the table. Table. Disable. Right. Now I'm just going to assign that now. Right. So, first of all, what I'm going to do, I need these offsets. Right, you can see here, got a PL1 and it should be MP1. All right, it's in this script here. We're declaring our labels, registering our symbols, and then running our standard check. And comparison, jump if not equal. And yeah, that's our label here right so first thing I want to do now declare your variables as local De declare everything as local as much as you can the only thing I tend to leave as global is my timers so that they're accessible within the disable portion of the script Everything else is fine local as long as it's within that script. And that way, you know, if you happen to reuse a name in another script, you won't have conflicts. Uh, if for whatever reason something is left running in the background, the next time you come along, you can spend hours figuring out what the hell's going wrong. It's usually because you've got a stray global somewhere and you need to reboot to fix it. Right, so we're going to call this XP table and we're going to make it a table with our curly brackets and we want to just put a string in there calling our uh, registered symbols. All right, so we've got PL1, MP1, close it off. All right, and now this isn't totally necessary, this part. But I like to do it anyway. Like, this game in particular does not need it. Because it's not getting updated. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're too busy making the sequel to update this game and it it's, doesn't need it so it will never get updated this script will work forever basically but in games that do get updated I like to call by offsets uh, within a table so that when 
it comes time to fix my script to work with the new version, all I have to do is edit this one line. And it can take you know, the amount of time to find the new offset and change it in a script to update your table versus having to rewrite everything all over again. All right, so it's an offset. We need it in hex, but it's also got to be a string for how we want to access it. So um, I know these offsets, but I'll just show you. So current XP plus 2C4, XP to level plus 2C8. All right. And we'll just put another one in. Always do your hex with 0x in front of it. That may or may not work. I mean, there, there's things you can do to make a 0x static. Um, it's just less trouble to declare it that way. Right, now we want a local function. And I'm going to call it setXP. Right, and then we're going to put some parameters in. Uh, we may or may not need these for later. Uh, what I mean by for later is uh, the way I'm doing this function is so I can call back and refer to this same function to do a lot of other things, like more than what we're just doing now. Like, uh, like I said, there's stamina and health in this tree. Uh, we've got, well, it looks to be attack, defense. Are being stored in there as well. And we've got our discipline points as well. So, yeah. Um, so maybe it shouldn't be called set XP. Uh, we could call it set stat, for instance. And then stat and mode. Uh, these will make more sense later on. But these are just parameters that we are putting in. And then when we call this function, we provide these parameters. Now, uh, we want to, so we don't forget later on and have to try and line up where we need to put the end. Just put end right there and come back. All right, indent it so it's easier for you to read. Now we're going to use a for loop for integer value. You can use anything you want in there. Doesn't matter. All right. Now, the reason it's set up this way as well is a little bit of error checking. You know, if something gets misinterpreted while we're playing, then, you know, this should hopefully handle those errors and it will just ignore it. And away we go. So, for i, comma, v in pairs. Uh, we want to call our XP table do right end end our for loop so we don't forget later right now uh, this will be another local variable so this is local within our function so this variable does not exist anywhere outside of this function, not even up in here with this script. So we can call it 
anything. Um, you can give it a meaningful name. I can't think of anything meaningful, so I'm just going to call it var1. And that's going to be a read integer function, which is a cheat engine built-in Lua function. So um, not 100% sure whether that's Darkbyte that codes all those in, or it codes some of them in, and community contributions, I guess you could call them wind up being that but yeah so we want to read integer now we want we want XP table and we want it to go through everything in there so we go XP table square bracket I because this is position one, position two, until it reaches the end. And doing it this way as well allows you to just add more and more to it. So, you know, you could, if you had a function that was going through, you know, all four of your pawns, all three of your pawns, so your main one, your two hired ones, yeah, or whatever game you've got, whatever, how your party is being read, you can just add to that, and it will automatically cycle through them until the end. All right, so first of all, we'll just uh, we want to test that it's going to work, right? So print var1. Hit OK. Enable. Uh, that should have come up somewhere. OK. That didn't do a thing. Uh, that's because we need to tell it, uh, so we want to put that as a string, concatenate with the two dots, and then, right, that should work, okay, it's not. Right, what have we got? Let me just do some quick error checking here. Ah, oh, of course. Um, we must, obviously, call the function. Right, so that should just work even though we're not putting our parameters in yeah All right so that there is getting the value set at the uh, registered symbols so we need our offset All right so in order to do that we want to do the concatenation strings. All right, close it off, do a plus, and uh, that will be All right. So uh, we'll call that. level so and if we are going to use these for different stats we'll give these more meaningful names doesn't really matter at this point and uh, we'll call this mode right so now we have to 
put parameters in. Otherwise, we're not going to get mode in there correctly. All right, and this should work. I will call it one and two. Uh, uh, one and one. We want we want to read our current XP. All right. And that's the value that it's given us. Now it's giving us two values. And you can see here that they're two different values because these are the addresses, I believe. No, they are the values stored. So if I go PL1 and P1, these are the four byte values stored at both of those addresses with zero offset. Now when we go uh, plus 2C4, right? Uh, okay, need to possibly make that a pointer. Yep. Right. So when we plus 2C4, that value and copy Paste address by four bytes. Right, so there's our XP to level. Player one. Current XP. Main pawn. Right, now they just happen to be the same because, well, I leveled them exactly the same while playing uh, that's neither here nor there right now it reads both because it comes through cycles through here reads the value there cycles through here reads the value there which we call with mode which is this value here or this parameter i should say Right, so now that's working. Uh, this is kind of where the error checking comes into it. So we can take that out. Now if mode is equal to 2, then remember your end to end that if statement is we're probably going to end up nesting more stuff in it. <laughs> I cannot stress how much easier that is. Now, what we want to do is read our maximum from there. Right? So that's why if mode equals 2, we're reading our maximum, like how much XP do we need to level up? So then we declare a local variable XP needed. Now, if we just do something like, you know, var one divided by three, we are going to get decimal points and while that's okay for a float, this is an integer, so we can't have decimals. It, it will cause the game to crash. So we want to call a function uh, map.seal, so the ceiling. What this is going to do is just round that value up to the next whole number. So even if it's 0 0.00001, I believe that will just go straight up to the next decimal value. You could do math.floor to round it down. It, it really doesn't matter. So, uh, we're dividing by three, so we only need to get roughly one third of the XP for our level. And then it's going to do what we tell it. So 
Uh, yes, there is another if statement in here. So if var1 greater than xp needed, then n. All right, so this is always going to be a third of that. And var1 is reading Now we need it to uh, we need var one to actually change. So I'm going to copy this so I don't have to type it out again and just drop it underneath there. All right. And we're going to tell that to always be position one. Yeah, and you can do things like inline comments, yeah, and just so that when you come back to it, you know, months later, like you see this one, oh, what's that position one? Oh, XP. Yeah, it makes your life so much easier by commenting your code. Let's expand that a little bit for you. Right, where were we? So, var1 is being overwritten by reading these two values at this offset. And so that's our current experience. If that goes greater than XP needed, then it's going to run uh, whatever we tell it to run. All right, so that's going to be this will always be one third of that maximum. All right, so I uh, will do another for loop. Let's just mix that in a little. Uh, four. I don't want to reuse I and V just so I don't get confused. Um, so uh, E I don't know. We'll put P for pairs. Doesn't really matter. For KP in pairs, uh, we're going off the XP table once again. Do right. Put your end in. Right. Tab across. Uh, what we will have here. We want to make sure that right. So var one, we're we're just going to keep overriding var one to make it do what we want it to do. Uh, that's going to be a read integer. Uh, that's going to be. We're going to concatenate a string the table and it's going to be W not P e, uh, W K sorry it's P table K and then we're going to concatenate the string uh, plus Uh, right. And that would be XP to level position two. I believe. 
Yep, we will want that position two. And then we will want to var one equals var one minus 10. Yeah, or we can minus 100, minus 1000, whatever you prefer. All right, and then we want to just again make sure that the value is correct. Right, uh, let's see, quick debugging here. Expected to close bracket at line 14. Right. There we go. Right, so there's nothing happening because var1 is not greater than xp needed. So let's just reverse that. Oh, and of course, um, this needs to be mode 2. Right, now you'll see that's gone through four times. That's because of this for loop. It's gone through. It, it doesn't matter how many times it goes through, as long as it goes through. And we can see this value here, 193300 is 100 less than 193400 right so it's safe to say our script is going to work how do we make that work we go right integer put our square bracket in a string xp table a and uh, yeah, it's basically the same as up there, right? And we go XP to level and square bracket. Position one. All right. So it's always going to be at position one. So you don't need to worry about any fancy script magic. And then place the value at var one, which is our XP needed to level minus 100. Right, now, uh, don't forget to change that back. Okay, now, what we want to do is set a timer. Now, this is where I said I'd try to keep everything local, <coughs> except my timers. I've just because of the way that I do them, um, I guess they tend to not self-destruct. So I have to put that in and to reference above this disable, I need to be referencing a global. Um, I just couldn't be bothered figuring it out. I'm sure there is a way to do it. This way works fine. So uh, we'll just set it to five seconds. And XP on timer equals function. Right. We're just going to tell it to call our function. So set step. I mean, at the moment, stat isn't doing anything, but this is the setup for running, you know, 
more scripts on top. So it's like a one one size fits all script for all of your stats, infinite health and all this and that, or you know. I'll think of something. So we're in mode two, XP to level. All right, and that's it. We call our function. We hit end. All right, readability. Put a couple of spaces in there. Yeah. Like to have at least one between these. So they stick out a little better. And that should do it. So every five seconds, that is going to go through and read this value. Well, it's going to read this value, divide it by three, and then compare this value. And if this value is more, then it's going to set this value to this value minus 100. Now let's just bring up a calculator. Come on, 3, 400 divided by 3. So 64467. Alright, I'm just going to uh, 64. Or five seven. Just change my XP. So it's still below that. Okay. You know, there it is. Uh, so every five seconds that script is going to run. And we'll just go gain some XP. Probably could have set this up so you didn't have to watch me run, but you know, you can see here that it hasn't triggered anything. Alright, I'm just going to kill this goblin if I can ever cast the damn spell. Okay. Well, we didn't see it in action, but I did only get 203 XP from the Goblin, and it's leveled me up. Alright, so we'll do that one more time. Uh, there's only a single Goblin here this time, so I shouldn't get um, leveled up, but... Let's see, one nine six seven hundred divided by three. So we'll go six five 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 six. All right, so that's under a third, All right? status there we have it Let's put us a hundred below so now when we go do our next kill we level up alrighty so set out to achieve what we wanted I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial uh, at the moment this isn't available on any website because I haven't uploaded it there. I'm still working on my table for this game with the things that I want to see in there. But uh, I just thought while I was making this, this would make a great lesson for you guys. And if you want a copy of the script, I will upload it for you. Just leave a comment and let me know. And you, know, you can hit me up on Discord. Um, in the I'm in the cheat the game Discord. 
uh, most of you already know that. If you want the script, hit me up on there. I'll send over a copy. But ideally, you would follow along and learn this stuff yourself. Like you, you'll be able to make much better cheats if you make them yourselves rather than copy and paste. And yeah, have a good one. Until next time.